Okay, greetings everyone. This is uh, Washington State Building Code Council Legislative Committee for January, or far, sorry, February 2nd, 2023. Uh, we please start with roll call. Todd Beruter. Here. Tony Don. Damon Doyle. Chill Anderson. Corey. Here. Jay Arnold. Here. Micah. Micah Chappell. And representative from L. We have three. We need four for a quorum. We don't have a quorum. If you want me, I can talk. I'll practice my English. Uh, otherwise, we can take a break and rejoin later, whatever the chair. Well, for, thank you for that. For clarification, though, are, are we able to go into legislative update and, dis and get the update without taking action? Yeah, I don't think a, a reason. Okay. Why not? Okay. Then in that case, let's, uh, until we have quorum, let's move past agenda items two and three and, and, and go straight into an update, please. Okay, I will share my screen and um, I sent you, uh, let me find the right one. I sent you a summary. Uh, there is another type of summary on the website uh, and I will show you something else on the screen. It, it seems like this year the session is too busy. It's, especially for me, so I can't keep up with all, but um, uh, I try to, uh, if I can't post it, I try at least to send you whatever that, you know, whatever is going on. So this is this is the new, uh, the new build. Do you see it on the screen, SB 5657? Okay, uh, and uh, there is a definition in 1927-015, it defines kit homes, and here is the requirement. It doesn't really add more work for the council, but adds an exception for homes under 800 square feet. I, I got the bill yesterday for review and I didn't have a lot of time to analyze it, but this is what I got and this is what I found. Department of Labor and Industries, they have their regulations for factory built housing, factory assembled structures. Uh, and uh, you can see right here, factory built housing, uh, tiny house with or without wheels. So again, I don't see direct issues with the council for the council but it the bill as it's written may create some uh conflicts with with labor and industries again it's very brief analysis because i didn't have enough time to go over the lni rules and stuff but this is what i saw yesterday uh the other the other potential conflict is uh, with uh the law that was enacted in uh, 2019 so uh if if we are dealing with factory assembled structures uh they need the lni uh insignia the cities and counties are responsible for the installation but lni is the entity that approves those that this excludes the manufactured homes because they are built under uh, uh, federal HUD uh, standards. But for these uh, tiny homes and uh, factory built housing and not the entire housing package, but even uh, 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 panels, uh, packages, it's, it's all, it all needs the uh, LNI uh, insignia. So this is what I have for, for this bill. So, and I, I wasn't fully tracking this one, but I'll, I'll get up to speed on it. I um, am cu curious if this uh, address, or um, references all the, the there's two new ANSI standards, actually three now for prefabrication. So I'll I'll uh, I'll do some homework on this and better the, understand. The bill better. the bill is very simple. It doesn't provide any further guidance. It just exempts 
kit homes under 800 square feet. And so whatever you read here, right here, this is what the bill says. Very, very simple bill. Uh, doesn't have detailed language. Doesn't say anything about LNI. Uh, it just refers to subject to subject to permitting by incorporated cities or towns. So, which is okay. But again, if LNI is responsible for uh, the approval and the construction of these uh, factory built units, then uh, it may create some some issues. Yeah, agreed. Okay, thank you for that one. Any other comments or questions on that, Bill? Okay, thanks. So, fifteen forty one, we 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 hit it. We hit it last week. Uh, there is not much we can do about that. 5491, uh, allowing the residential buildings of a certain height to be served by a single exit under certain conditions. This is copy paste from uh, uh, Seattle code. Uh, Micah was talking about this single exit uh, uh, a business. They did some work to research it, which I, I'm not really familiar with, you know, what they did and for how long. I just, Micah sent me their uh, requirement uh, in the Seattle code. Uh, there is a hearing today at 10.30, uh, and I'm planning to testify. And I, I will just say that it's never a good idea to have a court language uh, in the statute because it creates issues, maintenance issues, and even worse if the court changes because uh, of any reason like uh, new technology or uh, health and safety measures that weren't uh, included before. Um, so again, I will provide only technical uh, why it's not a good idea to have the code copy paste the code in the in the statute. So I have a quick question on that. Is that because if it's done by the legislature, the code body, the code council couldn't do anything about it? They would have to go back to the legislature to change for health and safety reasons or any. Uh, all that it would have to go back to the legislature to get fixed if it's in there is that why? yes if it's in the legislature yes and i i see micah is here and he's raising his hand and he is the person we needed for the quorum so uh go ahead micah sorry folks i'm i'm like triple booked and so i've got two meetings going but um this one is problematic. You know, I, I know we tend to not oppose anything. However, yes, yeah, Seattle has something similar, but what they don't indicate is that there are 14 additional pieces of criteria under our single exit allowance. And a lot of this ties into coordination with our fire department, their response times and, and you know, um water service and sprinklers and all these other things that go along with this single exit allowance and it's very restrictive so you know this it, it, it's going to go through I, I don't think this one's going to be relevant it's also mentioned in hb 1167 again without all the additional requirements so uh, you know it's unfortunate the legislation is going this way that they are just going around the sbcc because people don't like what we're doing i guess um you know, they don't want to listen to the technical experts. They just want to throw something there that sounds great. So unfortunately, they're missing a lot of the additional criteria that Seattle has for this. Um, if we are to support this, maybe we could change to um, something that is more palatable for everybody. Um, I know in the other pieces of legislation, they talk about uh, six units up to three stories in height. Maybe that's a way we could, you know, bring this down a little bit, but still allow it. I, I don't know. That, there's just some ideas, but again, they're just missing so much additional criteria. Criteria, um, you know. I, again, I don't think they should put it in this legislation, but maybe point back to the SBCC to work on this through a work group, like 1167 kind of does, and you know, allow the capture of all that additional criteria. 
that doesn't just give a, a blanket allowance for this. So thanks folks. Sorry. <laughs> well, thank you for the information, Micah. See, so Jay. See the, the, the situation I'm in, I have to testify. And if I say, hey, can we have another work group and another off cycle rule? It's, I'm, I'm, like, I'm, I'm asking for more work. And at the same time, you know, the the quote in the statute is not, again, a good idea. And as Micah said, there are missing pieces. Sorry, Jay, I, <laughs> I don't know. No, no. It's, it's, it's a good point. And, I, you know, I, I, I think we're, uh, I think the point that Micah uh, makes that some of these bills are moving means we're going to be impacted by these one way or the other. And so um, even though this may be, um, having a hearing today and the other bills are, are coming out of committee, there are opportunities before they go to the floor and continue to, to work with legislators. And, you know, maybe we want to um, uh, talk about if one of these things around um, these uh, smaller multi-unit buildings is moving, what's our preferred approach and whether if we're going to say if you're going to have to do if you're going to do this we'd rather have the work group than uh prescriptive code in legislation and if you have to do the work group we'd like to work it on this schedule it's less impactful for us um I, i'm wondering if we um and i don't think this is for the hearing today but uh, uh, as things move forward if we could talk about um, messages we're going to bring to legislators about that. I I will testify today and I will send a written comment to the committee and I can send the same uh, comments to the sponsor of the bill. If I would may though, uh, Jay, it's a good point. We, we have time until policy cutoff, which is uh, I believe the 17th of February. So from now um, until policy cutoff, the bill, a lot of the um, comments that we put on, we wanna just make sure we go on the record. Um, also before the bill is exact out to see if there are ways we can get amendments, but then we also have an opportunity before it comes off the floor. So um, I think it's just important to go on the record um, Stoyan's testimony would be great. Writing the sponsors would be great and just seeing how we can make an impact on that. Okay, thank you, Ann. Um, by the way, we're running this meeting fairly open. So if anyone from the public would like to, to comment you know, or inform us, please, please raise your hand anytime. Thank you. Okay, go ahead, Stoyan. Uh, 55, 53, uh, this is for the emergency shelters. Uh, I talked about it the last time. Uh, <clears throat> the sponsors of the bill contacted us in advance and uh, they changed the effective date, which aligns with our 2024 code adoption cycle. Uh, it's still extra work, but uh, I think I have some idea how to do it. If 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 the bill goes in the way it is, uh, it should be an appendix uh, to the building code or residential code or board. Um, this is all I can say. The, Brian, the you know, initial date was one year earlier, so it would require a no cycle rule. But uh, currently. Uh, how the bill was introduced, the date aligns with our triennial code adoption cycle for 2024. Yeah. So, and I was going to ask, you know, I'm in this industry and, and I am, um, uh, you know, manufacturing and, and I have a hard time keeping up on the coordination between the efforts that are desired in the tiny home space and the emergency shelter space, obviously in the manufactured home space. So I, I'd really be curious to, see all these together and, and, and have the council discuss what the different pathways would be. My mind is going into a matrix mode here, be trying to trying to better wrap our head around all these efforts for us over the next three years of rule making. And I, I can see what gaps they're trying to fill in, in this smaller, smaller structure space.
This is all I have. Everything else was discussed uh, in detail uh, last week and in the week before. Mike, go ahead. Sorry, I I kind of struggle with the 5553 temporary shelters one just based on the fact that they're asking the SBCC to address all options. I mean, there's so many variables when it comes to emergency shelters and where they're placed. They're placed in so many different types of occupancy classifications, you know, construction types. And, you know, this is this was, hey, let's do a blanket appendix that covers all that when, I mean, honestly, that's an entirely new code that could be very, very long. Um, and, I, and I'm going to jump on Stoyan's bandwagon here that, yeah, it gives you a couple of years to do this, but it, again, it's creating an entirely new code. And I honestly, you know, we've looked at this as an exploratory option before. And is what it does is it, it actually would limit the options of your code official and fire code officials for pulling from different sections of the code to, you know, make something work. Again, if it's if it's in an appendix that's and maybe the appendix is just you know optional, but at the same time it, it says here's all the criteria laid out for temporary structures, and you shall adhere to that. Again, that takes away the discretion of your code officials or your jurisdictions, not just the code officials, but the jurisdictions that you know try to allow these things to have flexibility in what they can and can't do in certain occupancies or reuse of structures or or new structures you know if they're if they're a prefab unit or something else you know sometimes it's you know it has good intentions but when you get down to the individual items in it it actually is limiting on flexibility for the jurisdictions to you know allow these to be built quickly you know um in meeting certain criteria so i Again, it's not a bad idea. I, I always sound so negative on these things, but when you sit down and look at what they're trying to do, it doesn't necessarily function the way they intend, and it removes flexibility from your jurisdictions moving forward. Thanks. Thank um, you, Micah. Just yeah. to, you know what, I should add one more item. If you look at some of these jurisdictions that have done this based on the allowable criteria of the RCW that says uh, there's limitations, Again, it's like pulling or putting together an entirely new code just to address these. And it's very restrictive. Takes away flexibility. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Micah. Jay? Uh, I have a different topic, Todd, if we're done with talking about the emergency shelter bill. Sure, go ahead. Uh, question on House Bill 1409. This is the requirement to adopt R4. And it's scheduled for a public hearing on the 8th. So I just wanted to know if that's something, uh, Stoyan, that you were uh, uh, offering uh, feedback or testimony on. I can testify and say that we're already working on it. I think we passed a message to the sponsors that, you know, adopting R4 only. It's the easiest path for us, but it won't fix anything because it will create other issues. So currently we're working on it. I already have one proposal. I'm waiting for a DOH, Department of Health, to send me their version. If they don't, I will start with the proposal I have and we will start the discussions probably late February or early March with the technical advisor groups. Uh, this is what I can say uh, if I testify for for this bill. That's good. Thank you. Okay, Stoyan, for your guidance here. Uh, I don't. I mean, I have. I have if you need it, but you have it on the website also. Uh, this is for this week, uh, the upcoming events. Uh, 
if there is a bill. So here is the public hearing for 5491. Uh, it's at 10.30, uh, 10.30 today. Uh, and on the, second, on the second page, you have all bills here that we not only we analyzed, but we are monitoring. So there are bills that I didn't analyze and I don't have them in the summary because currently there is nothing for the State Building Code Council, but we are watching these bills. So if something comes up, uh, when the bills are uh, modified, then I will add them to the uh, analyzed bills that we are discussing during these meetings. The, so, and, and, it, it, so it, are there any any hearings say next week where you have a desire to have i guess it'd be tony or me in person for support to inform and, and uh express any of these concerns the february 8 1409 is one that it's important, I think. But uh, if I tell you that I analyze the calendar and uh, I'll be lying. No, understood. Um, maybe that's an invitation. If, if, if there is a desire and you, you feel it's advantageous or to relieve you of some of the pressure, even if it's just a... Uh, well, and Todd... Um, Wednesday is when they start to develop the, the bill schedule for next week. And so they start to trickle in. And so we probably will know a little bit more today or tomorrow what bills are up for hearing because they have to have that by Friday. So, uh, but that's awesome. And we'll let you know what bills are coming up too. Usually okay. when I get when I get the calendar for, for the next week, I mean, talking in general, not specifically for next week, but if if I have it on Friday, I, I I will send it to you on Friday and post it on the website. If I have it on Monday, I'll do it on Monday. So uh, this is what I've been trying to do. Uh, on my radar was fourteen oh nine only. I may be missing something because again I haven't uh, seen the calendar put together. I just looked up the bills uh, in advance. But if there is something, I will I will let you know. Okay, thank you. Um, Okay, anything else in uh, that the committee members would like to review or discuss in the bill? Okay. Well, thank you. With that, then we'll let's close out agenda item four. Um, let's uh, now that we have a quorum, let's circle back and uh, to item two, which would be to approve the agenda. But uh, can we hear a motion to approve the agenda, please? So moved. This is Corey, I'll second. Okay, thank you, Jay and Corey. Any uh, any discussion on that? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Okay, thank you, so approved. Uh, item three, review and approve minutes for January 26, 2023. We hear a motion to approve, please. This is Corey, so moved. Jay, second. Thank you, Corey J. Any discussion or edits? Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Okay, I think that was ayes have it. So thank you. So approved. And then uh, skipping now to item seven or five. Any other business? Okay. Hearing none, thank you everyone. Good meeting. We will adjourn. You guys have a good day. Thank you. You thank too. You. Thanks, everybody. You too.